Seven days ago, this report was delivered to the White House. It confirmed that the shots that killed President Kennedy were fired by Lee Harvey Oswald. This woman is Lee Harvey Oswald's mother. She says the report is ridiculous. She has come to our studio in Toronto tonight to defend her statement and her son. Her story is one of seven awaiting you in the next 60 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, this hour has seven days. Since last July, the police of two countries have been searching in vain for Harold Chamberlain Banks, who jumped $25,000 bail in Montreal to avoid facing an assault charge. Hal Banks was the undisputed... John Fitzgerald Kennedy was pronounced dead at 1 p.m. on November 22nd last year. 51 minutes later, Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested at the Texas Theater in Dallas. For during those 51 minutes, a second fatal shooting had occurred in that same city. And at 7.10 p.m., Lee Harvey Oswald was formally charged with the murder of patrolman J.D. Tippett. Six and a half hours later, he was charged with the second crime, the assassination of the president. Oswald was questioned for approximately 12 hours between 2.30 p.m. on November 22nd and 11 a.m. on November 24th. Throughout this interrogation, he denied that he had anything to do with the assassination of President Kennedy or the murder of Patrolman Tippett. But Lee Harvey Oswald did not stand trial shortly after 11 that Sunday morning with half a hundred newsmen, three television crews, and 70 police on hand he, in turn, was fatally wounded, as publicly as any man in history. Mrs. Oswald, were you watching? No, I wasn't. Where were you when your son was killed? Uh, I was with my daughter-in-law, Marina, at the Executive Inn. And just about 15 minutes before the terrible tragedy, I said to Marina, Honey, let's turn the television off. And I turned it off myself. And so we didn't see the actual killing you of my saw, son. You saw the films then later? I saw it for the first time this past Sunday. What did you think as you saw that picture of Ruby approaching toward your son with a gun in his hand? Well, I was prepared for it because for the past 10 months I have investigated in, um, just every lead and everything there was. And uh, the reporters had told me repeatedly that they had never seen such an astonished look on any man's face as my son. And then Sunday, I heard him say, the president, who said anything about a president? This was important but to no, hear him say this. No matter what kind of preparation you had, could anything prepare you for seeing a scene like that? Certainly, you must have felt something. Yes, of course I did. I immediately went to the screen, and I went as close to the screen as I possibly could, because I wanted to catch every word that my son said. I had asked the officials to show me this picture because this would have helped me in my immediate investigation, but I was denied that privilege. So this was the very first time, and of course, I didn't even know that particular film was going to come on. And immediately when I realized that Lee was leaving the uh, detective's office, I, as I said, I went as close to the picture as I possibly could. And I saw the uh, protection that he had. He was wide open. The men were on either side of him, and there was no one in front of him at all. And then, of course, I saw Jack Ruby shoot my son. You're certain, Mrs. Oswald, that your son could not have killed the president and could not have killed Patrolman Tippett? Well, my investigation shows nothing other than that Lee was a patsy, and this is a frame-up. I don't say I'm right. Who's but framing I... him, Mrs. Oswald? Well... I wished I had the time to go into the complete story, and you must understand that there's many, many uh, aspects to this case. Uh, who framed Lee Harvey Oswald? I have stated from the very beginning, after being kept in protective custody for six days, where we were not allowed to see anyone. In other words, we were also deprived of an attorney, 
and the newspapers were running wild with stories. Anything they wanted to say, the family was uh, kept will you in some, protective custody. Will you someday tell this story of who framed Har Lee Harvey Oswald? Uh, yes, I, I have told it, and I started to say now that my investigation shows that our trouble is in our State Department, that there are few men in our State Department who wanted President Kennedy out of the way. I'm a very unpopular person. Do you really believe this, Mrs. Oswald? Uh, it isn't that I believe this. It is because I think I have circumstantial evidence to back me up. What evidence do you have? To support well, you? I have uh, documents that are not uh, uh, explanatory. I went before the commission with my documents, and the one in particular they were supposed to inform me about, and they didn't. And, uh, well, it's... It's just really uh, too much to try to understand the impact of all of this. Mr. And Oswald, do you accept or feel any guilt at all for what has happened to your son? No, I don't. And this is the deplorable part of the report of the uh, uh, president. The president's report on the assassination is that uh, Lee was a misfit and that uh, I didn't... Uh, give him uh, the emotional need that he needed. But the Warren Commission report says guilty. After millions of words of testimony, thousands of documents and articles, and with 10 months of analyzing the available information, the Commission has concluded, among other things, that with no conspiracy of any kind, Lee Harvey Oswald alone was responsible for the wounding of Governor Connolly and for the killing of the patrolman and the president. And with reenactments like this, the commission concluded that the assassination shots were fired by Oswald from this sixth floor location. Some trees obscure the view. The first shot would have been fired when the presidential car was right about here. Ballistics experts checked and rechecked their conclusions about the flight paths of the bullets. A model was marked to indicate the wounds of the president. Another model sat in with the actual suit jacket worn by Governor Connolly last November. The torn fabric where the wounding bullet pierced is circled with chalk. Members of the commission attended reenactments in Dallas, including the chairman, Earl Warren, Chief Justice of the United States. The commission report has been accepted by many as thorough, exhaustive, and final, but not by all. The commission report is just the case for the prosecution a sophisticated restatement of the Dallas police charges. Oswald was not permitted representation by counsel nor an open trial because the commission said he was not being tried. He was not tried, just convicted, and convicted in the absence of evidence which established guilt. Mr. Lane, as early as last January, even before you were appointed uh, counsel for Mrs. Oswald, you were trying to establish a case for the appointment of a defense counsel before the Warren Commission. Have you made, uh, in effect, for the last year a career of this case and of your opposition to the Commission? My opposition is not to the Commission, but to the failure to permit Oswald to be represented by counsel. And my opposition is to the findings of the Commission uh, based upon a total lack of evidence the Commission has reached a conclusion. Has this been a full-time occupation for you since shortly after the assassination? Uh, well, I would say in the last six months I have given up my law practice. I have now served as the chairman of the Citizens Committee of Inquiry, and our investigation is continuing now in Dallas. Mr. Lane, the Warren Commission uh, got 30,000 pages of transcripts from some 26,000 interviews conducted by the FBI and the Secret Service. <clears throat> Pardon me, it conducted more than 500 interviews itself. Uh, it's a commission composed of seven well-known and presumably responsible men. On what ground do you expect the public to take your charges seriously 
over theirs with the, the limited resources you've had for investigation? Well, the Gallup poll indicated some uh, 10 days after the assassination when the government was insisting that the Oswald was the lone assassin, that the majority of the American people did not believe the government case then. Perhaps a Gallup poll would indicate that at the present time, that there are still many who doubt the government case. Why? On emotional grounds or on the grounds that they've seen all the evidence and they've been able to make a lucid decision? I'm an attorney. I've tried criminal cases for many years. I don't function in the area of emotion. The fact is that a number of important witnesses have not been called by the commission. The New York Times referred to the commission report as the most massive detective job in the history of the world. It may well be. 25,000 interviews conducted by the FBI. But they failed to call an eyewitness to the Tippett killing. They failed to call the ambulance driver, who actually came on the scene moments after Tippett was killed. The assistant ambulance driver, the couple that called the ambulance, four persons standing on the grassy knoll who testified or wanted to testify, that the shots came from behind them, a whole slew of witnesses. When a witness had something to offer, which was inconsistent with the preconceived position of the Dallas police that Oswald was a lone assassin, the witness was not called. Did you provide the commission, sir, with all of this information? I most certainly did. And so that the commission, according to you, knew exactly whom to call. You supplied them with names and facts and figures. Not only did I, sir, but four eyewitnesses to the assassination were employed by the Dallas Morning News. They wrote a feature story on page three of the Dallas Morning News telling about what they had seen, totally inconsistent with the shots having come from the book depository building. Do you, sir... They were never called by the commission. Do you, sir, wish us to believe, Relay, that after t uh, three quarters of a year of investigation and all that has gone into it, that your information is more accurate than the information which has been obtained by the commission? Sir, for 12 years, which is longer than eight months, the government of France said that Captain Dreyfus was guilty of treason. They might have said it for a thousand years. So that years. was in the 19th century. We are now in the 20th. And 20 that was years. a great French democracy, and America is a great American I think democracy. The Dreyfus, well, any other Let me ask you this, it. Mr. Lynn. Uh, do, you, do you imply in the statements that you've made and the stand that you take that there was some kind of conspiracy, first of all, involving either more people than Harvey Lee Oswald or other people? I leave the area of speculation and conjecture to the Warren Commission, which has preempted the field. I deal solely with the question of facts. But in reading this 30-page document, which you pu published, printed shortly after the Warren Commission report was out, one is left with the feeling that the implication is, A, that there was a conspiracy in connection with the assassination, B, that there was a, a massive conspiracy after the assassination, which must have involved the Warren Commission, the FBI, the Secret Service, the Dallas Police Force. Well, sir, you're entitled to your inference. It's not my implication. I'm willing to stand behind every single word in that document. If that's the conclusion you draw, and you cannot challenge the facts, then it is your inference which may be correctly based. Let's look at the document in terms of actual facts, and Fine. let's start with page one, uh, paragraph two. The accused criminal, this is Mr. Oswald, was murdered in the basement of a courthouse while handcuffed to law enforcement officials, etc. Now, the photographs, of which there's one in this volume published by the Warren Commission, and many others have appeared in every magazine and newspaper in the world very nearly, uh, show that Mr. Oswald was uh, handcuffed in the sense that his wrists were handcuffed together and that a police officer was holding him by each elbow. That's a, a small, unimportant fact, perhaps, but is it indicative of the... Uh, seriousness with which we well, should how take about all the of commission well if you feel that's an error i think it is not but rather than go into that trifle let me tell you the commission listed my name as a witness as mark r lane i have no middle initial sir how about that <laughs> after eight months of investigation a misprint a misprint i'm interested in the mentality sir of a man who would presumably question the entire integrity of a person like the chief uh, supreme chief uh, justice of the united states of america and what this man would be willing to do in questioning that integrity. I'm willing to examine the facts in this case. I say the people of the world have heard the charges against Oswald and are entitled to hear the defense and entitled to draw a conclusion. When the Chief Justice was a prosecuting attorney in Alameda County in California, he presented many cases to the jury. He said this man is guilty and many times the jury said not guilty. Did they question his integrity by voting not guilty? I think not. I think the question Thank of you, the integrity Lane. of the Chief Justice has not come up. Thank you, sir.